To any real fly fisher out there, this is exactly what you've been looking for all your angling life. Yes, this is the adjustable dry dropper. But Mike, does this actually work? Where can I buy these? Hey Mike, what bead size do I use? How will a fish stay hooked? Wait Mike, what size tube do I use? Can I use a tapered leader? You have questions, but don't worry, I have answers. Well, howdy folks, my name's Mike from Fly All Season, and if you've clicked on this video, it could be because you're skeptical or very interested to know if this rig actually works. And real quick, as you can see behind me, we are in a summertime paradise. It is about as prime as prime could be. So you're throwing dry flies, you're throwing dry droppers. But back in the day when I was using traditional dry dropper rigs, it never really made sense to me. It always seemed a bit uh, clunky because either I was wasting tippet, trying to get to the right depths, or I wasn't getting down to the fish and I was missing potential bites. Now, with this rig, I made a video about a year ago. I'll pull that up right now. Editing Mike is doing the work. Oh, look at that. Now this is a video where I actually break down the, I guess the origins of this rig, how I kind of put it together in my noggin, how I tie it, how I rig it. But the problem was that it wasn't really, um, I guess descriptive enough, let's just say. <laughs> so when I tie flies, I like to think of it as cooking, not really baking. So every fly that I tie is gonna be a little bit different, materials are gonna be a little bit different, and so that led to a lot of questions. Now, some people have figured it out without needing to be, uh, they, I guess they're handheld, let's just say, but they're always frequently asked questions with regards to this rig because of that video. So this is gonna be the addendum video, the FAQ video for the adjustable dry dropper. So. Stick around, I'm gonna walk upstream a bit, find a good spot, and yeah, let's get into the first question. First and foremost, we need to get this one out of the way. Mike, do you sell these adjustable dry droppers? This is the question that I probably get the most, and it always kills me every time. It breaks my little heart when I have to tell somebody that no, I do not sell them, or no, I don't have time to tie them up for you. I promise you, if I had the time, I would sit there at night and tie up every single one of these adjustable dry dropper rigs in whatever fashion you want. Give them a little smooch, send them off to you and have you catch every single fish. Unfortunately, I just, again, I don't have the time for that. I barely have time to time for myself. But I do have a solution for you guys out there who maybe aren't the best with the vice and we can, uh, yeah, maybe work something out. Have you ever heard of this little thing called the Discord? <laughs> I'm sure if you've seen any of my videos, at least in the ends or, you know, sometimes plugging it in between. The Discord is, it's a, another branch of fly all season. It's more the community side of it. So you can go over there, you can talk with your fishy friends, maybe meet some folks from your area, but you can also go there and ask folks to tie some flies for you. Go over there, there's some really awesome tires, and I mean, damn, they tie him better than me in most cases, but go there, you can ask them um, in the general or in the fly tying, and they can, they can hook you up no problem. So I do not sell them, but folks in the Discord do. So I'll link it down below. As always, go check it out. But with, with that big one out of the way, I think it's time to maybe go a little bit more into the materials, especially for those of you out there who are looking to tie these. So yeah, let's uh, put a couple casts in this hole. I think there might be some fish there, but uh, yeah, let's get up to question number two. And question three, that being what is the exact size B you use and what is the exact size tube you use? Okay, how beautiful is that cutting, man? That is so amazing. Summertime, it's just the best. But second question is gonna be in the realm of materials. And you probably saw before Editing Mike did it right, we're gonna be talking about beads first. And in the original video, I kind of talk about it. So what we're using are glass beads. All it needs to do is slide over the hook shank and be you know, thick enough. I can't quite remember what the actual OD or ID is on these, um, but it's anywhere between 1.5 and three millimeter. That's what everybody else has kind of uh, reported back to me because when I originally bought my glass beads, I was using them to make midges. So for that like air bubble, but I found out that they were great for this adjustable dry dropper. And so I don't remember what actual size they are. And as far as brand goes, again, you can use whatever brand suits best craft store or no free shout outs, but uh, I think Killer Caddis is the one that comes across most. So 
go check those out. I'll put some links down below for possible beads that you can use that the community has used. Again, if you have any more additional questions for exacts, the Discord's a great place to go. But yeah, color and size, it doesn't really matter. It just, it has to be able to hold on to that tubing. And that's gonna be question three. So we'll dovetail right into question three. That being, Mike, what size tubing do I use? Because if you go back and watch the original video, the whole uh, rig is it's hinged on the beads and the tube. So this is, I would say, related to or inspired by the New Zealand strike indicator. Uh, for those of you out there who are nymph truckers like myself, you, you probably know the beauty of a New Zealand strike indicator. But that tubing that comes with the wool and that little tool, that is the tubing that I use. That is the size that I use. And you can get that on Amazon or you know anywhere for just the tube. You don't have to order all that wool and stuff. So I guess it's considered regular, but you can get extra large as well. So if you were tying up some big fat hoppers, maybe go bigger with the tube. Or like mine, I just use the normal or the regular size tubing. Again, Editing Mike will put up all the graphics and what I personally use and then also I'll put it down in the description below so that you guys can check it out for yourselves and yeah, get the right tubing on this bad boy. So, okay, that's gonna be kind of the material part out of the way. Hopefully that clears up any and all questions. Ooh, that flies bite me, ow. And now let's, uh, let's keep walking upstream, maybe find some more fish and let's go over the last few, just kind of miscellaneous questions with regards to this rig. Questions four, five, and six are as followed. Can this be used on a tapered leader? How does the sliding rig actually stop? And can you tie this on any fly? That run in there looks so juicy. This, this is a pretty incredible valley, but we're coming to an end. This video is almost over, I promise, folks. Thank you so much for being patient. Thank you for sitting around and listening to my rambles as always. I know this is kind of a different style of video, but it's important, especially with, again, all the questions that are coming in. But speaking of questions, We've got three more. Now, these are kind of more miscellaneous, more with regards to the rig itself. So one that I get a lot is, Mike, how are you rigging this? Are you using a tapered leader or are you using tippet sections? Now, me personally, I haven't used a tapered leader since like I was 12. I really don't like them. I think that they, I don't know, they have a lot of memory in them and then they, they affect your casting. I'm sure you know, there's a lot of merit behind them, but I personally like to make my own leaders. So I'll go from 0x down to 70x, whatever it might need to be uh, to fish the water that I'm fishing. But for this particular rig, the FAS ADD, I like to put it on sections of 2x or 3x. You can go 4x, but then there starts to be issues. So on the 2x and the 3x, you can slide that ditty up and down, up and down, and it does not mess with your tippet. I've I had the same adjustable tied on for three, four trips, five before I even feel kinks or need to, and you know, those could just be operational errors, like getting it stuck in a tree or something. So this is a super slick way to move your dry fly up and down, up and down. And yeah, it doesn't affect the tippet too much. So I usually go for a two foot to three foot section. Uh, again, it just depends on what you're fishing and how you're fishing because the longer that section is, the more long your overall leader's gonna be, and that could get, I don't know, tough casting. I like shorter leaders as a rule, but I digress. The second misc question here is, Mike, does that dry fly really stop? Does it really hold? And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it does. And I've got a couple ways to, I guess, remedy this. First would be the tippet ring, especially for my bigger rigs like this one right here. You can kind of see, I've got a real teeny tiny tippet ring, and there's a few reasons for this. First reason is that it does not slide through the tube. It's a, I mean, it's a freaking ring. It's not going through that, no matter how hard some swamp donkey comes up and smacks your rig. Not a chance, I promise. I've had some really big fish come up and eat this, and it, it holds really well. So, I use tippet rings for that as a stopper, but then also as a transition, because like I said, I'm going from 2X on this rig because I want it to really hold, be more of an indicator than an actual like, dry fly, even though it still catches fish, but I digress. <laughs> um, the transition's very important because oftentimes my nymphing rigs, you know, I like to go with uh, 3X, 4X, even 5X sometimes if I'm really getting risky. So that transition knot from 2X to like 4X can be tough sometimes. And be it a blood knot or any other connector knot, the, the different diameter, it's just, 
it can be a little bit sticky. So that tippet ring offers a way to make that seamless transition and yeah, you'll have a nice, uh, nice rig there to stop and hold. But like I said earlier in this question, I also use blood knots. So on smaller FAS ADDs, so like my caddis or my tiny ants or even little hoppers, I will just use a blood knot. Now, note with this, the blood knot can slip through sometimes. So I've had it where it slips through the bottom tube. It doesn't affect it that much. You just have to go back and slide it back under, check for any wear and tear on it, of course, just like any of your you know normal rigs. You don't wanna have nicks or you know any kind of kinks or nothing. So just be aware of that if you're using blood knots, but it is a, a very successful stopper. And I've caught so many fish on just like the tension between that blood knot and the tube. Okay, last question here, folks. And this is, uh, I don't know, this is this is kind of an interesting one, but I, I get asked a lot, Mike, can I apply this to any dry fly? And I, I don't know, I always scratch my head and I think, well, no, no, of course not. I mean, I guess in theory you can, but that's why I wanted to make a note that it's, it's summer right now. If you're using a dry dropper, oftentimes it's in the summer. Big hoppers, stimmies, ants, chubby Chernobyls, you name it, that's what you're using. So that's where I feel like this rig is the most applicable. So like this one here, a big old hopper, man. That's that's what I like to use them on. Now, I do size them down every now and again. I've got caddis, little ants that you can kind of play around with, but when you start adding those beads and shortening down that hook size, you're not working with as much room and it can be tough. There's just a lot of stuff going on there. So I would encourage you to think like you would normally, you know, if you're throwing a dry dropper, it's gonna be in the summertime. I mean, be my guest, size 22 midges in the winter on an FAS ADD rig. You're a mad lad at that point, but hey, I'm not gonna stop you. But folks, that is, that's kind of all I got. Those are the main questions that I get and I hope this clears up some of the confusion, maybe some of the, uh, uh, I guess, tension around it. Be sure to check the description below so it's that big box of text that I always put down in these videos that says, hey, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. So the Discord, all the different materials, and again, no free shout outs to those materials. That's just, that's just what works. So I'm here for the people, I'm here for you. I want you to use this rig. It's caught me so many fish from the drop to the top. I mean, it's, I, I hesitate to say revolutionary because, you know, what does that mean in the realm of fly fishing? But I know it's caught me more fish. I think it can catch you more fish. And that's what I'm here for, folks. I want you guys to have as good or better experience than I do. So hopefully, hopefully this helps. And for any of those haters out there, any of those skeptics that still don't believe me, well, stick around. I'm gonna go catch a fish on the FAS ADD and you can eat your socks. Yes, yes. That's a great fish. Well, howdy folks. If you were seeing this, then that means the video is over. And like always, I just have to say thank you so much. It's very strange as I'm standing in the middle of a mountain valley by myself talking to a black fox. To say thank you and like really mean it, but I do. It's it's wild to see how fast this channel is growing, how much engagement comes from this community. It's it's so awesome and you know i love hearing from you guys so if you have any comments on this adventure or maybe some adventures of your own hit me up in the dms hit me up on the comment section wherever it might be i i love talking to you guys but folks for real the more you like and comment and share as shilly as that sounds it makes this algorithm machine move and it pushes this channel and it i don't know it just keeps growing and the more it grows again is silly as it is to say the more i could be doing cool adventures like this and bringing you guys along so again appreciate the support and wherever you find yourself be it in the beautiful gem state of idaho or in your backyard i sure hope you keep those feet in the water and until next time tight lines